Welcome to C++ with Miyoshi. Uh, we're going to clone a repository, actually going to fork a repository, and then we're going to clone it down to our um, local computer. So I am logged on as Miyoshi Test, and this is a different repository than I normally map. But then I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to my, repositories here. Um, actually, just go there. Oopsie. So I'll just go to this uh, Michael T. Miyoshi CPP with Miyoshi repository. And this is where I have my students and other folks go. And I go down to, if they're learning C++, and I go down to Game Inch Tutorial. So I'll click on Game Inch Tutorial. And what I want to do is I want to fork. Notice that there's this fork button over here. What that's going to do is it's going to copy my this repository all the way, all, the whole thing, into my Miyoshi test repository. So I'll click on fork. And notice that now it's after it gets done here. Notice that it already put me in Miyoshi test. And it's got the whole. A repository here. So now this guy is in uh, Miyoshi Test, which is the um, repository, or this is my user um, for testing and doing some GitHub cloning and forking and stuff. So I'll go to code. Next thing I'm going to do, I'll go to code, click on this code button, and I'm going to click on this little uh, clipboard icon, and that's going to copy this uh, repository name into the clipboard. So I'll, I like to do it a couple of times. Used to show, at least it used, to seems, it used to seem like it showed up here. So once I do that, I already started Visual Studio. And I'll go to Clone Repository. And I'm going to go ahead and actually, I'm going to uh, normally, I would paste this in there, Control-V, paste that in there. But I'm going to go to GitHub because I want to make sure I'm signed in as the right person. So I'm signed in as Michael T. Miyoshi. So I'm going to go ahead and change that, add an account through a different GitHub account. And notice it, uh, it authorized the GitHub account that I'm logged on to on the uh, web browser, which is great. That's what I want to do. I'll paste in my URL, control V, and it should put that in there in the right repository. That should be good. Oops. Yeah, that'll be good. I'll just put that in there. I don't know why I have to, I could put that or I could click on that either way. Apparently it likes me to do that better, run my repositories. Um, if you are just one person and not trying to clone your own stuff or fork your own stuff, then you won't have to do this. You could just do this back here in the normal place and hit clone, but I have to do it slightly differently. But again, if you are just doing this um, as a user who's not me, which you aren't, uh, then you would just hit that clone button right there. I had to do it a little bit different way, but I'll go ahead and hit clone. And it's going to go ahead and clone my back, my uh, clone my background, clone my repository down to my um, local computer. So, forking. What happens when you fork? That creates. Uh, it makes a copy of your of the repository you're forking to you to your user, and then when you clone it, that takes it from here on GitHub from your GitHub user down to uh, your local computer. And that's what I want to do. So once I get done with that, I'm going to make this guy half of my screen here. And here is my um, what do you call it? Visual Studio. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click on Solution Explorer. And it's already gotten my solution open. But if it didn't happen to get my solution open, 
what you could do is you can go and try to open it. So you could right click on here and go to is it open solution. I can't remember here. Maybe it's this guy. You go to open solution. Oh, since my solution is already open, um, I was hoping it would make me have to do it that way, but that's okay. Uh, notice I have the, well, you may not notice this, but I do have the latest and greatest um, version of Visual Studio right now. And that was what allowed me to do some fun things with adding users, whereas older versions would not do it quite so smoothly. At any rate, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open up my C++ file. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure it works. So after you clone it, you should be able to go ahead and run it and it should work. And what I'll do is it'll give you two windows. One is a console window and the other is an application window and they'll both be blank. Um, and eventually we'll get there, um, but they're both blank. They're just black windows there with nothing on them. And all you have to do is see what happens. And here we go. I'm gonna get this, this is my console window. And if you do any prints or uh, printfs or any C outs, they will actually show up here. So you can actually do some debugging that way. And here's my application window. No, it says, notice it says my awesome game on top. Now you can stop this game by either clicking on this little red square. You can click on the console application, the console window X there, or you can even click on this uh, application window X. Any one of those will work to close up your game. Now, if you if you are used to using the Team Explorer like I have been for the last however many years, um, it's no it's different now in the newest in the newest version. So what you can do is you can just hit open get changes now, which right here is a tab, but I can open get changes. Notice there's no commits, there's no changes that I've made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to. Yoshi, oops. Yoshi side scrolling game. And that is because I know it's going to be a side scroll here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run it again. Notice now it shows my changes that I've got. I just have one little change there. And it should again have the console window. And there it says Yoshi side scrolling game on the application window. So again, I'll just close this up. And now I will commit my changes. So let's see here. Um, change name that shows on application. So um, as you start using GitHub more and as you start using Git more, you will start putting better and better um, commit messages, at least uh, hopefully you will, uh, because that's going to be the big thing about, um, it's going to tell you what you just put up on, on Git or on GitHub. So I'll just commit all. And once I do that now, um, it created, notice it says it created my local commit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push. So I'll just hit this push button. Notice it's slightly different if you're used to Team Explorer. It's a slightly different uh, icon now. So I'll just put the push. And now it's going to push this up to my GitHub. And if I look over here, now I can look at the base project. I can look at my game. And I can look right here at the CPP file. And notice it says Yoshi side scrolling game. Yay, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. So everything worked out really well. Um, there's one more thing you need to do or you should do. And that is this. If you go to Solution Explorer and you right click on my game, this the solution here, you can open the folder in File Explorer. So way down toward the bottom, there's open file, open folder in File Explorer. When you do that, you will come to your project and you'll notice that this Williams game engine here, um, Visual Studio 2019, VS 2019, you can click on that guy 
and that'll take you back to that folder. And notice there is this game engine tutorial. When you look at the game engine tutorial, uh, I have a couple suggestions for you. It's beautifully, it's a beautiful document. It's well written. Um, he's got some fun, geeky humor that I love. And so Eric Williams is the one who wrote this. He was a Teals volunteer in my class, and he wrote the game engine tutorial itself, um, the game engine and this tutorial. And I just love the way he did it. I've used it for several years now. And one of the things that I would suggest, he gives you great code. Uh, again, I will tell you the same thing I tell you in my book. Don't copy and paste, because all that does is make you a better copy and paster. And the other thing is you may or may not have all the characters you, um, all the characters may not come over well. So when he gives you code, type it in the, the way you need to. This code already is typed in. You can see that's exactly the same as over here. Um, but read through the tutorial. It's great. Um, and it's got some things that you're going to need. So as you get farther and farther into the tutorial, you'll notice that he shows you less and less. Um, well, he, he puts stuff in the words that don't necessarily show up in the um, code. So be careful about don't just read through and type in the code. That's a great thing, um, but make sure you kind of learn as you type it in. Again, don't copy and paste. That just makes you better at copying and pasting. And again, read through the stuff. There's lots of cool stuff in here. He gives you lots of explanations. Um, don't just blindly put stuff in there and make uh, header files and CPP files read through what it says, and do what he says to do. So uh, that's my little two cents on the game engine tutorial. Um, again, thanks to Eric Williams for making the tutorial. And thanks to another Teal volunteer, um, Mike Magruder, for making the game engine tutorial work. And we put it up on GitHub, and he showed me how to do all that kind of good stuff. So thanks to those two for all they have done for me um, as volunteers in my classroom. So there is the game engine tutorial. It's wonderful. You can, um, once you get done with it, you can start making your own game using the same, um, same game engine. Or if you are not in my class, you could actually take this um, game engine the way it is and make your own games right from, right from the beginning or as I would suggest, still uh, go through the game engine tutorial. Then after you do that, you can make your own game in fairly short order. So um, by the way, there is one other thing. Down at the very bottom here, he tells you a little bit about, oops, uh, tells you a little bit about stuff that you may or may not need to know uh, in the appendix. But before the appendix, he tells you that you're going to make it a side scroller. And uh, I can't find out where it is. He tells you to make it a side scroller and he tells you how to do it, but he doesn't show you code on how to do it. Um, one last thing that I remembered, and that is toward the top, there's a couple things that are not quite applicable anymore. Um, this whole public thing is not necessary and obviously because we are we have it on github and those of you who are not in my class that doesn't make any sense to you anyway but you could just clone the repos or actually you can just fork the repository clone that down to your own local computer and you're all set the other thing is that um he tells you in the tutorial to um copy art into a so into a folder and you don't have to do that. We actually made that. Um, did I put that in here? I put that in here somewhere. You have all the resources available to you. And uh, the other thing is there's a lot of stuff in this engine folder. You don't need to mess with any of that stuff. Um, it's don't actually don't mess with that stuff until after you've gone through this and when you want to modify the game engine, um, then do so at your own risk. And I guess that's about it. So 
stay away from the game engine. Uh, you don't have to move the files when you um, need to add in all that good stuff. It's already there for you in the right place. You just have to um, point to it as the coding says to do. So that way you don't have to worry about file systems and all that too much. So there you have it, a game engine tutorial made by a former um, Teals volunteer and made available to my students with a uh, with a with another Teals volunteer. And thanks again to those guys for helping me out. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you next time on C++ with Miyoshi.